Continuing chapter 2, verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. Notes. The animals and the fowls were created out of dust exactly as man, Scripture, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Notes. Carried within the name that Adam gave to each one of these creatures are the characteristics of that particular animal or fowl. So we are speaking here of a man who had amazing intelligence. To do all of this, Adam had to have a distinct knowledge of speech, meaning of the meaning of all words, and the capacity of attaching words to ideas. Why not? Adam had the greatest teacher that man has ever had, which is the Lord God. Verse 20, And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. Notes, We learn from this that the animal creation was of far greater magnitude and intelligent, a, a intelligence than at the present. It was the fall which changed the creation. That's confirmed in Romans chapter 8, verse 19 and onward. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Notes. Records the first amne or anesthesia. anesthesia what a word. Uh, scripture. And he took one of his ribs. Notes. The word rib here actually means side. Scripture. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. Notes. The woman is not merely of a rib, but actually of one side of man. Verse 22. And the rib, which of course is the side, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. Notes. The Hebrew says, built he a woman. Horton says, when God created the man, the word form was used, which is the same word used of a potter forming a clay jar. But the word uh, build here seems to mean God paid even more attention to the creation of the woman. You can look that up in your Strong's, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, scripture. And brought her unto the man. Notes. This presents a formal presentation with God, in essence, performing the first wedding. Thus he instituted the bonds of marriage covenant, which is actually called the covenant of, uh, covenant of God, uh, confirmed in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 17. And this indicates that God is the author of this sacred institution. This is the marriage model and was instituted by God. And any other model, such as the homosexual, homosexual marriages, uh, so-called, can be constituted as none other than an abomination in the eyes of God. And that is confirmed in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 24 through 28 and I know I'm going to draw a lot of heat for saying that but I really don't care it's in the Bible verse 23 and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh notes that is she is man's counterpart not merely in feeling and sense his flesh but in his solid qualities in other words it's a being it's a creature scripture she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Notes. God did not take the woman out of man's feet to be stepped on as an inferior, nor out of his head to be put on a pedestal as a superior, but from his side, close to his heart, as an equal. Verse 22. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. Notes. This passage must be viewed as an inspired declaration of the law of marriage. Scripture, and they shall be one flesh. Notes, points to a unity of persons, not simply to a conjunction of bodies or a community of interest or even a, a reciprocity of affections. Verse 25, and they were both naked. Notes, refers to an absence of clothing, at least as we understand such. They were actually enswathed in light and transfiguring light at that. Scripture, 
the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Notes. We're not ashamed because there was nothing of which to be ashamed of. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Notes. The word subtle as used here is not negative, but actually rather positive. Everything that God made before the fall was positive. It describes qualities such as quickness of sight, swiftness of motion, activity of self-preservation, and seemingly intelligent adaptation to its surroundings. Scripture. And he said unto the woman, Notes. Not a fable. The serpent before the fall had the ability of limited speech. Eve did not seem surprised when he spoke to her. Scripture. Yes, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Notes. The, the serpent evidently lent his uh, faculties to Satan, even though the evil one is not mentioned. That being the case, Satan spoke through the serpent and questioned the word of God. Scripture. And the woman said unto the serpent, Notes. Proclaim Satan leveling his attack against Eve instead of Adam. His use of Eve was only a means to get to Adam. Scripture. We may eat of all the fruit of the trees of the garden. Notes. The trial of our first uh, parents was ordained by God because probation was essential to their spiritual development and self-determination. But as he did not desire that they should be tempted to their fall... He would not suffer Satan to tempt them in a way that would surpass their human capacity. Uh, the tempted might, therefore, have resisted the tempter. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Scripture. Eve quoted what the Lord had said about the prohib uh, prohibition, but then added, Neither shall you touch it. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Notes, Proclaims an outright denial of the word of God. As God had preached to Adam, Satan now preaches to Eve. Jesus called Satan a liar, which probably prefer, uh, refers to this exact moment in time, and that was in John chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 44. Now we're on to verse 5. For God does not know in that day you eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened. Note, suggest the uh, attainment of higher wisdom. Scripture, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Notes, in effect says you shall be Elohim. It was a promise of divinity. God is omniscient, meaning that he has that his knowledge of evil is thorough, but not by personal experience. By his very nature, he is totally separate from all that is evil. The knowledge of evil that Adam and Eve would, uh, would learn would be by moral degradation, more or less, which would bring about complete wreckage. While it was proper to desire to be like God, it is proper only if done in the right way, and that is through faith in Christ and what he has done for us at the cross. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that, there, that the tree was good for food, notes, presents the lust of the eyes, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, which is the lust of the flesh, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, the pride of life, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, which constitutes the fall, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Notes, refers to the fact that evidently Adam was an observer of all these proceedings. Some claim that he ate of the forbidden fruit which she offered him out of love for her. However, no one ever sins out of love. Eve submitted to the temptation out of deception, but Adam was not deceived. He fell because of unbelief. He simply didn't believe what God had said about the situation. Contrast verse 6 with Luke 4, uh, 1.13. Both, prevent, uh, both present these temptations, and uh, man just completely fails. We will begin at verse 7 of chapter.